worried about changes happening in your business? Well, this is the show for you. We are going to pivot. We're going to leverage this change in business. And this is Motivation, Mean Life Motivation Live. And I'm Monica Henderson. Let's get started. All right, we are here with the most amazing people on the show today. So to join me, uh, we have Marilyn Robinson and Chris Hampton, and we're going to dive into this conversation. But before that, we want you to know that you are the co-host co on the couch. So don't forget to pull out those cell phones or get that, that keyboard activated. If you want to chime in on our conversation, drop it in the chat, say hi, let us know you're there. And if you're watching this in replays, Feel free to put hashtag replay and continue to comment so we can keep the conversation going. Let's meet our co-host, shall we? Uh, so Marilyn, we'll start with you. How has leveraging change helped you on your entrepreneurial journey? Okay, so I guess I'm Marilyn, supposed to be you... talking. <laughs> I know yes. that, um, I'm hearing you cut out. All right, so hey, I'm Marilyn Robinson, and I'm a life navigation specialist. I help share a lot of knowledge about what it's like getting old and how life changes as you go through the phases. So I'm here to add some life business knowledge uh, from my, from my many different experiences. So how has leveraging changed help you in your entrepreneurial journey? Well, you know, as younger, I didn't really change, uh, you know, and working for corporate, I really just went with the flow and what other people told me to do. And it, it really wasn't until I became an entrepreneur and had full responsibility for my life that I realized you you really have to anticipate all of life's changes. It's not just what's changing in your business, but what's also changing in your life. So you find that you want to work the amount of hours, working 60 hours like I did in high tech, 25, 30 hours. And so, you know, I mean, your, your life also dictates how your business is going to change. And then, of course, you know, I was in high when uh, we were doing email on mainframes. And now, you know, we have smartphones. So you always have to anticipate technology is going to drive you to change, whether you like it or not. So if you want to be competitive and provide great service to your customers, you're going to need to keep up on technology. You're on mute. Mm, shoot. Yeah, I was glad I'm the only one that can't hear. <laughs> so uh, I love, I love that. I love that you've had to change, and you had, a, you've had a very long career. So I, I love knowing that, like, throughout your career, you've had to keep pivoting, keep changing, uh, especially as technology moved forward. Uh, uh, Chris, what about you? How has uh, like leaning in or leveraging change helped you on your entrepreneurial journey? Uh, it's helped me trem uh, tremendously. Um, I, I think the, the best example that I can give to you is COVID. Um, when I first started as a speaker, trainer slash coach, uh, the, the, the main stage was the live stage. And I actually came into speaking at the greatest time in the world, but at the same time, it was also one of the scariest times because COVID was just shutting everything down. So I had to leverage um, and accept that change was necessary to do something different. Learning this virtual platform, as you see, we're learning and we're adjusting and we're, we're building at the same time. We were able within two years to build a platform and a reputation 
uh, that I think would have taken me a longer time doing it the traditional way. So uh, the secret behind the juice or the, the secret behind that brand was realizing that change is going to happen. I, I, I have been in the sales industry for over uh, years. And in that 20 years, I've never seen a good year where nothing has ever happened that if I was living by circumstance or living by the circumstance of the day, it's like, oh my God, we would be poor. But in each of those environments, I was able to sell regardless of what was happening in the world because one, I was able to accept that change is going to happen. Change does not necessarily have to affect me in the negative. It's how I choose to think about the direction of my business and how I'm going to flow. Yeah, you know, in uh, in a lot of conversations, people are like, I don't like change. Oh, change is so hard. And why do things have to keep changing? But I think we get to change, right? Like that just like uh, in, in my particular case, uh, I got to change, right? Like I got to change everyone's perceptions of me being the the couture girl um, and being uh, this uh, international businesswoman who uh, supports entrepreneurs, right? I got to change. That was a, that was a lovely change, right? And so sometimes uh, I think uh, we are sad when changes are happening or when things are different. But even you know this community, like Chris was saying came out of the change of us going from virtual, uh, from in-person to virtual. Uh, and because of that change, I know Marilyn. Because of that change, I know Chris. Because of that change, like 90%, probably 95% of the people who are in the Life Motivation community um, were because of the change, as opposed to people who I was already kind of interacting and engaging with anyway. So um, I, I, feel like if we could stop thinking about the, like, I have to change and start thinking about, I get to change. I think um, that just mindset shift really makes the biggest difference in everything. I think the issue is that people are like, especially I want to change. And, And the problem is not that I get to change. It's the fact that I have to reconcile that I, I want, I have the will to change. And, and, and that's the thing is that the problem is change isn't going to happen whether you want it or not. Right. But <laughs> you know, you, you're sitting here wasting precious time with your attitude and, and getting that, you know, a challenge in your thinking about how you're going to address change. You can continue to stay in the status quo. You can continue to being just over broke. You can continue to keep on going to that same job every day, or you can choose to have the, your will to, to have that will on the inside of you to say, I'm going to pursue my dream. I'm going to pursue my purpose. I'm going to pursue change. But you, we can never get, we have to get through that gap between the thinking and your will. Mm-hmm. And then I get to say, I get, I can look at it as the opportunity of, I get the change, but it has to get through here and here first. Yeah, Marilyn looks like she's an amen corner. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna let her uh, amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. So, you know what, not to look at this negatively, but gosh, you know, I made so many changes in my entrepreneurial um, life since high tech. High tech, I just did what they told me to do. I grunted through it, didn't get to change much. But the entrepreneurial is, is I start heading down a path and I start doing something and I go, you know, this just isn't, I'm not finding the joy. It's not, I can change it. I can change it. I don't have to stay there. So it's a matter of step back and saying, okay, what's winning? What do I want to keep? And then what I need, how do I pivot and change to make it better or, or more? Um, um, and definitely I'm always measuring thing by, things by bringing okay. gratification. Then you need to think about. Oh, I think we've lost Marilyn's audio. Uh, So while we hopefully get her back, (laughs) uh, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next. Oh, now she's talking really fast. (laughs) 
so we're gonna move on to the next the next question, uh, which is the hype the the hot topic for the day is not only life changes, but really business changes and why it's important to leverage change in your business. Like the key part that I really want to talk about is leverage, uh, because I don't think that people think that change can be leveraged. Uh, and so I would really love for you to know, uh, I would really love to ask you all, um, like, why is it important to leverage change in your business? And we'll start with Chris in hopes that uh, Maryland's internet will catch up to us today. So I, I think we have to look at what leverage leverage is, or do you, are you are we saying leverage in the part of um, like a lever? It, change can actually, if you do it right, be that extra push that you need to um, to get over. So when I think of leverage, I think of a lever that maybe um, how can I create the right picture? I, in that, and, and I'm trying to, to, to if you have a huge rock. And you have a, a, a you're using that bar, you're using that bar to and putting that pressure down so that you can move something that was twice as big as you are. Okay, so when we think about leverage, put that picture of your mind and think of that that the current situation or the current obstacle that's in your business, and then you have this one little rod that you have that's under it, but that one little rod with your weight is able to make the difference of moving that stone. So when you're looking at leveraging your business and using change. There's two ways that you can look at change. You can look at change as the lever, like we're saying, or you can look at change as the rock. And and, and the problem that you have right there is with looking mm -hmm. at it right now is use, change can work against you or work for you. And I choose to allow change to be able to work for me. So when I'm making decisions or when the when I'm in the corporate world and the corporate world tries to make decisions for me, I have to look almost as a way of an Aikido move of how I'm going to make that change go back and use that same pressure to push me forward. And that's important, but it's how I view change that makes the difference because then I look at change as the doorway to opening up creativity. So now I'm a brainstormer. When I'm looking at change, I'm no longer seeing change as the rock or the problem, but I'm looking at change and in that change, there's some creativity. In that change, there's some new flexibility. In that change, there's some new ideas that I never thought I would have access to, that if I didn't have access, if, if change wasn't here, I would never have that opportunity to do or pursue. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Marilyn, did you want to kind of add to what he was saying or? Can you hear? Me? So oh, there you are. Can you hear me okay, or am I cutting out a lot? Uh, okay. No, at the very end of the last statement, you had cut out, but you're good. <laughs> okay, I'll try to talk fast then. Yeah, so I mean, change um, change is required to move forward. Period. I mean, you, you're not you you know you're not going to stay up with uh, the Joneses or the business leaders. Uh, but the, the opportunity of change really enables you to provide so much more for your clients, your customers, and yourself. And there's one thing, uh, there's a book called One Thing, and it's really identifying what's the one thing you can change that'll have the most impact in what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So it may actually also eliminate other things that you, so you don't have to do them. So looking for the right thing to change uh, really enables you to uh, doing other things and move forward and and add value to your clients and your customers. That is brilliant as usual. This is why we call her the wise one <laughs> because she always has such such wisdom to drop into the to the conversation. You know, um, so the leverage that uh, brainstorm <laughs> right brainstormer um the the leverage you know even from my own understanding of leverage right and how uh chris was saying i'd actually think chris that the leverage is the movement right like the 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 big rock that you're trying to push forward um in in his in his analogy is is your business it's it's what you are trying to move right and you can do your best to try to push that rock uh as much 
as possible. Uh, and the gravity is still going to be the same and the, the circumstances and all of the things are still going to be the same. Uh, but change, if used properly, can you be used to actually pull that leverage to get it rolling in the right direction. And you can take that rock and beat it and say, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, that that lever and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you won't move. And you get mad and frustrated and beat it. Or you can put it in just the right spot and allow that momentum to kind of push your business in the direction that you were going. So I I, I love, I love that analogy because it's so true. Um, change is going to happen regardless, right? Change is like gravity, right? Like it's, it's a law, like, Peggy always says, uh, if you pick up a pin and you let it go, it's going to mm -hmm. fall every time, right? So change is inevitable. It is, it is a constant. It is a law. It will happen every time. But we do get to choose mm -hmm. how we lean into that kind of change. And we could fight it and take that lever and beat the rock. <laughs> Probably pull a muscle in the process. Or we can actually use that 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 change to actually move the rock in the right direction. So, so like there's three words I usually use that to, to, to go on top of what you just said was there's you have to accept. And, and I think that it feels like we're having a, um, a change anonymous moment right now where we just have to just come to that point where we're like, ah, I got to accept that change is here. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, it's almost like, and I don't keep going back to the COVID picture, but if you remember about COVID when it first happened, the world went into there was two classes of there was two groups of people, those that accepted it, and those that were accepting it were able to make adaptations and changes in their lifestyle and to pursue, and those that didn't believe that it was something that was needed to deal with, and then and you actually saw. The, the struggle between the two and those that adapted were able to make changes where those that denied it, it took them longer to make oh, yeah. the changes. And in the end, they still had to do what? Make the changes. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, just think about it. Every time there's been a phenomenon or a circumstance that's coming to our life, how much time have you wasted denying what is in front of your face rather than right. looking at it and saying, I got to make a change and either I change on my terms, which I like, or I'm going to have to change on somebody else's terms and I don't like. Yep. I, well, it, really what we're saying here is uh, you can either change, you can't change your scenario or circumstances, but you can change your perception or your perspective on that is, is really kind of what, what it sounds like we're talking about here. This conversation is rolling uh, and we always want to help people stay inspired because, you know, again, change is hard. I used to uh, have a post a long time ago that said hard doesn't matter, uh, but we will we'll lean in <laughs> to this conversation. How does the lack of understanding how to leverage change affect the way that you move through your life and your business? Uh, so Marilyn, you look kind of clear right now. So let's see if you can we can get the good part of your internet. <laughs> Okay, we'll do it. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it's one of those things that, um, you know, if you don't understand that you need to make change or that change is going to happen, whether you like it or not, um, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to uh, feel like you're failing. Things are going to slow down. And, you know, the reality is, is things are going to start falling apart. And I, I love what Chris said about, you know, it's, it's a motivator. If you are um, you know, if you actually look at change and you said it inspired by change, uh, it's fearful at first, but then when those creative juices get flowing, then you get excited and you get motivated and you get energized and there's reason to get up in the morning because there's something new happening. Uh, so I think the thing is, is that, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hit yourself upside the head and accept that life is going to continue to change. I know it's frustrating to a lot of people, but accept that it's also a proof that if you embrace change, if you don't embrace change, then things are going to fall apart and you're going to, you're going to wallow in your victim and, and life is going to suck. Yup. That's all I got to say about that. Yup. <laughs> Uh, Chris. Well, I'm going to come on the side of those that are like, 
oh man, they're telling me to change. And they just spent like the first 20 minutes talking about, I got to change. But I want to, I want to kind of help you out because as much as we're talking about change, society doesn't teach you how to deal with change. We don't mm-hmm. really train you how to adapt to change. Um, and, and I think that it's, you know, and I think that I'm going to give you now a day that there's no excuse not to deal with change because we're going to show you how to deal with it. And I think that th- the question was, is the lack of understanding of, 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 of how to leverage change. So what you're basically saying is, well, how does not knowing how to change or how to deal with change affects your business? It's going to keep you in the same scenario over and over and over again. It's going to keep you wanting to cling to your comfort zone over and over and over again. So when what, if you learn this, these three healthy tools that I'm going to show you in three seconds, <laughs> how, how to deal with it is one, we already talked about it, accepting that change is going to happen. But then change gives you the ability to adapt. So then when you realize that the change of your environment is happening, you get to adapt. So now you got to go in that wide angle mode and say, what are the resources that I have around me that I can look at this and adapt? What changes can I make around my home that I can do on my terms that I can make my world better? Because if, if change is happening, most likely the people that are around you don't have a rule to deal with change either. So it gives you a level of, of liberty to start making rules on your own. In the sales rules in the world, I'm like, I like to make my own goals so that my manager doesn't give me goals. So I'm already like ahead of the game. I'm now becoming solution based because I probably came up because I adapted. I probably came up with some solutions that weren't there before. And then the last one is innovation. You're able to be able to innovate. You're able to be creative. You're able to take something that was already existing and make it even better. So when you understand that you have those three levers that you're dealing with, you got you got one that has one level of torque, another one has a greater level of torque, and then when you're innovative, it actually makes you the most valuable person on the team because I don't need three other people to tell me I need to change. I need someone to help me to navigate through the change. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things that we teach at Mink Life Motivation is uh, the cycle of rebirth, and it really does kind of explain the, the what is happening when changes are happening. We go through these cycles all the time of, of rebirth, of regrowth, or of something new happening. Uh, and so you kind of go through this phase of like, okay, we have a new objective, a new goal, a new something. Uh, and then we go into coming to an understanding, like how, what, how can I be successful doing this? What do I need to know in order to do that? Uh, And then we go into the the phase of building, right? So once you have an understanding, you can build on that understanding. Uh, And then you um, have the ability to sustain that for a period of time. And the part that everyone hates, um, but we run, well, at least I run to, uh, is the shift. There is always a shift. And that shift is either in in, um, performance or in satisfaction, Right. And I run to that shift because that shift is going to give me all the intel I need for the next phase, which is to examine and develop. You examine what's happening, develop a strategy, and then you're reborn into a new new space. And when you can understand that change is happening like that all the time, like think about your business. Think about the last time you had to change your business and what cycles you went through in that. You'll see you built something. Right. You like, OK, I got a new product. You, you decided to understand, like, OK, who am I going to sell it to? What is going to happen? What's the business? What's the product? All of the things. Uh, and then you decided to build that product, whether it was like putting together PowerPoints like I did or maybe actually create getting getting with the manufacturer and, and building that product. Uh, and then after that, you had to actually sustain this by selling it and getting it out there and making sure that people are getting it. And as long as it was work, as long as it's working in that way, we, uh, Chris was talking about sales goals, right? Like you hit a stride where you're like, okay, now I'm selling this thing like hotcakes and it's coming off. Right. And that only lasts for a period of time and either you get bored because you're like, okay, well, this was fun. I'm making money. It's consistent. I got this, uh, but I want more money or it stops actually being sold. Well, then that pushes you into a shift of like, okay, well, how can I sell more or how can I change the product? So it's still really interesting to the people who are buying it. And then from there, we're able to actually take that next step of examining kind of like, how do we do, how do we do that? How do we change it? How do we shift it? How do we grow it? Uh, So that you can 
have the next phase, right? The next model, the next version, or the new product. Uh, and you can go into there. So there is a there is a, a biology, a rhythm to it, just like in nature, uh, that we all have. And if you can understand that it, it always goes through that cycle every single time. Think about anything in, in your, your life or business, it always goes through that cycle then you will be able to move on. Well, my producers are saying that we are hanging out on this question too long. We need to move this party along. So uh, keep networking time. So who should people ask for help when they're trying to leverage change? Uh, and we'll go to Marilyn first. Who should we ask for help? Well, there's a lot of people out there. There's people that are friends. There are people that are work associates customers and clients and uh you know so it's it, it's really who you network around and uh you know and asking for different opinions it goes back to what arena put in there brainstorming more brains are better than one and, and so if you want your business in a different direction and you may not know where to start or what that change looks like you know looking to people that you do and have experienced what you've done is very beneficial. And then once you identify the change, then you need to figure out, well, who's the expert? Who, who out there knows what it is to make that change? And, and that's who you want to reach out to for, uh, you know, ideas of how to implement the next phase or how to provide the service or product. Uh, so you're going to go out to the network and look for people who understand what it is you want to accomplish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Chris, who should people uh, ask for help when they're trying to leverage, uh, trying to leverage change? Oh, well, then when, when changes happen, I'm, I become more aware of my my surroundings. So I, I do something that's not traditional. I, I, I reach forward for those that are before me, that go before me, that are going where I'm going. So they're there, they've already attained it. But sometimes even there, where they're at, they get locked into their regiment that they can't see the new changes and how to navigate. So I deal with those people that are on the same level as I am, my peers, because my peers are navigating the same waters in present tense, and they may be doing something that I can learn or pick up or while I'm moving. But then I don't negate that because there's a popular saying that why am I going to go to people that ain't got what I got and ain't going to go where I'm going and all that stuff. And, and I hear that level of toxicity, but I've learned some things from the people that are behind me. Yep. And, and, and so if, you know, some people want to be one dimensional and say only go for the head of the room. That may work for a second, but when they're all in the room and they see the same thing and they're dealing with the same effort and they're going back and forth, best believe there's somebody that's either on the same level of you or someone that's behind you that's the next level innovation that's behind you that just doesn't have the influence that you have that's able to make that change and help you to navigate that as well. So I go forward, I go where I'm at, and I'm reaching back. So, shameless plug, that is the Mink Life Motivation Community faux show. <laughs> that is, you, like, I was going to give you a shameless plug too. Hi. Right. And Mink Life. <laughs> literally, literally listed our community as a whole because it is so true. It's a, tri you know, that tribal experience of like we all, all of our experiences are worth it. And somebody who wishes they were in our shoes also can see something that maybe we don't see, right? Or see some talent that we didn't think to tap into. And so they, they may be able to say, you know, you're so, so brilliant at this. And you're like me. I'm brilliant at that. And it might just be the spark that you need to go to go into the right direction of like innovation in that way, because you weren't tapping into that particular set of talents that you have already. Or maybe uh, or maybe they're like, you're really good at that. And it can help you kind of refine what you're offering or what you're doing so that they that you can be better at delivering your greatness. And so um Yes, most people want to reach out for the mentors, but uh, I'm going to channel the co-host, Andrea Gortz, who says, there are maps and mirrors, and Peggy's over here doing the gestures, too, because she's like, yep. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, there are what maps and mirrors. You, what happens when you are the change that's supposed to be in the room? So yep. when you look at that and, 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 and how I feel right now in the corporate environment, because I have a, I feel like Liam Nielsen, 
I have a certain level of skills that are, you know, that are there, you know? <laughs> but when I walk into certain rooms, they don't think the way that I think. I don't think corporate. Like, I don't think like the corporate machine. And I understand the value of that. I'm not trying to become the corporate machine. I'm the one that goes in and I disrupt the corporate machine because I understand the change that I bring to the room. You see, when you're dealing with people that have too much regimentation and too much of the box thinking, you can be intimidated and they'll try to shut your change down. But when I realized that I could be that leveraging factor in the courtroom or in the in the, in the court environment, in the entrepreneurial environment, I end up, because I understand how the deal changed, I can also be the change that I need to be. Be the change you seek in the world. I love that. Uh, Marilyn? Uh, did you have anything to add to that? Oh, we're probably going to go a little long today because I, I love having conversations with y'all. But Marilyn, did you you were a main corner in over there and I wanted to give you an opportunity to chime in. No, I, I really like a lot, a lot of stuff that Chris is saying. It is great and, and not, uh, not assuming people are going to see things the same way that you do or value them the same way. But what you have to do is step out. You're not building your business you're building your business and your clients. So you better understand what's of value to them. Because if you are, are so self-centered that you're only thinking about what you think is cool and what uh, what you would find, find you know, fun and fancy, that may not be what your customers will really want or uh, are looking for uh, their experience. So it, it is a balance. I mean, you're, so you do need to show up and it does need to reflect your personality. Yeah. Or even, uh, but, you know, uh, you know the, the, the ultimate goal is for clients. Sorry about that. I, the, the delay had me all messed up. So my apologies for interrupting you. Um, the, like, even like how you were saying it, it's even like listening to your customer for what changes they're asking for is what I'm hearing. Like, what are they asking for? Because you might think that the industry is going in this way, uh, and but your customers are saying, but we still really need help in this way. Uh, and uh, literally the Minkubator um, is a unique space in that way. And so many people I've talked to, they're like, this is so desperately needed. And that came out of necessity because I was listening to conversations I was having over and over again with members in our community. And they were like, I, I don't know how to do this entrepreneurial thing. I'm missing this, that, or the other. And they gave me context clues on how to move forward uh, and to change the products and the product line and the community to fit their needs. Uh, so I 100% with you, 100% um, agree with you, um, Marilyn, that like listening to the people who you are actually serving uh, could help you change better. Uh, for the long run. Okay, so we are 33 minutes in, which means I have to move. Yeah. So we're going to move on to gain knowledge and your final thought. So I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to drag this out. So I need your final thoughts on how to grow in this area of leveraging change. Final thoughts, one tip on how to do that. Uh, Chris. Well, I would say start taking the initiative and start looking for ways to change on your own. I think the problem and reason why change is hard for people is because they're, they're failure to evolve. Um, they get stagnant. They get used to the same old, same old. So look at what different ways of how you can stretch yourself. And I'll just give you an example. Uh, on Sunday, I had an opportunity gave to me to join a speech competition. Well, I didn't have to do that. And that speak chomp was in four days. Who does that? I, <laughs> I kind of initiated change in my life to be able to do that, to be able to push myself to another level and make change happen for myself. So look for opportunities that are going to change you and to stretch you so that when change comes, you're already limbered up and ready to take that pressure because you've been stretching all along. Perfect. Love that. Marilyn. Final thought. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah. 
I want to go up on Chris's comment. Uh, you know, so I was under that same when you and I first met and you were doing one of your conferences, you reached out and asked if I wanted to be a presenter. My first response was, oh man, um, pretty full. I got lots going on already. Do I want to add that to my things to do? And I stepped back and said, here's an opportunity. And it sounds like fun. Um, I enjoy working with Micah, so I'm going to go for it. Uh, so it is a matter of, uh, like like Chris was saying, you know, establish yourself uh, for how you want to be. I am not I hate getting bored. Sitting around doing the same stuff. I, I changed jobs at Intel multiple times just because I, hey, I learned it all. I'd done it. I've been there. I wanted to go learn something new. And so if you think of change as the opportunity to learn something new and experience something extraordinary, then you'll embrace change and you'll look forward to the, you'll look for change. Oh, yes. That is brilliant. I would say uh, that my one tip for leveraging change would be to give up on the how. Um, I know a lot of the times we get stuck on, well, I have this goal and this is exactly how I'm supposed to achieve it, achieve it. And that actually makes the entire process of change so much harder and so much more friction oriented and so more frustrating and so more so much anxiety written. Uh, if you can have a goal and say, hey, this is the goal. I don't care how it gets done. We just got to get it done. And you open yourself to surrender to how it gets done, not my business necessarily. I'm just going to do my due diligence and ride the wave or ride the flow to what, how it's going to, like to however uh, we get to this end goal. You're going to find that it's a lot easier to change and to pivot and to like flow into the next the next thing. And what you'll find is the ride is more enjoyable. Uh, you'll have more fun. You'll you'll be open to talking to different people, which also is super fun. Uh, and it'll take you in places you never thought you would go, like Scotland. Uh, so that's my final choice, <laughs> my final tip. Uh, and that that is a little, you know, thing, but uh, it's our favorite time. And of course, because I'm moderator, they're going to want me to do the song. So it's time for announcements, announcements, announcements. Uh, and <laughs> we're going to start with Marilyn. Uh, so Marilyn, what is going on in your world and how can people connect with you? Okay, so on um, my website, on marilyn robinsoncom contact me. I enjoy having conversations with people to see how I might be able to help them change or remove those roadblocks and blow up those, those rocks. So reach out. Okay, Chris, what about you? Uh, we can reach me on champim.org. And um, I have a free masterclass that I think that would be so appropriate for what the topic that we're talking about. It's called Living Beyond Where You Are. And it's going to show you how to live by vision and purpose rather than living your life by circumstance. So, you know, if you are in that rat race and you're in that thing where you're doing the same thing every day and you just don't know how to get out of it, this is the class that's going to be happening. And it's my free word. It's my favorite word, free, 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 free. All you have to do is hit that tiny URL uh, link at the bottom there, copy that down, cut and paste it. It's in the chat. You definitely want to take part of that because that's going to help you change your direction so that you can go to the next level. Oh, yeah. And of course, you know, in the Mink Life universe, we have lots of announcements because we always have so much going on. The first announcement is I'm coming to you, Scotland. Yes, you. You hear me. Or you'll hear me in a couple hours anyway. Uh, I'm coming to Glasgow to the Hard Rock Cafe uh, to actually present uh, my new talk. Uh, so if you want to see my legs uh, in person, you can meet me at the Hard Rock Cafe on Tuesday, July 26th from 12 to 2. Um, we will be doing a networking event with Ben's Biz Social Networking with special working in social event. It's only 25 euros. Uh, if you are a biz social member, you get a discount. Uh, we're going to be talking about how you can actually impact the world by using your zone of genius. And I don't mean just a little impact. I mean a extinction level 
impact on the world. So if you want to be a part of that, you can join me there. And if you are min a Mingle member, I am actively working on getting it so that you can see it live in our community. So you don't want to you don't want to hesitate to join me there. Also, uh, if you're not a mem Mingle member, uh, you should join us. We have a private online learning community where these amazing people who you saw on the panels today or in the show today. Uh, are a part in sharing their expertise. Uh, you can watch videos uh, in our knowledge library. You can direct message other community members. It's our own little private, lovely space without any political commentary or birth announcements, just really focused, amazing, successful energy flowing through the room. You can ask for help on demand master, uh, masterminds, and you can also share your own expertise. So you do not want to miss an opportunity to kind of connect with our community. Uh, and that is our Mingle community. Also, we have two conferences coming up. That's right, I said it, two conferences, only two this time. Uh, but these conferences, if you have not been to one, I just want you to know that you have never experienced a conference like this. We have 24 panel discussions, six reflective workshops. We have for breakout sessions is global networking we have an amazing game of tag that you'll not want to miss and we are all sharing our experience and expertise in just two days you were able to walk away with a full action plan for your life business training and networking uh and last but not least we have our incubator yes the Incubator is a six day a week co-working space where you can, again, pop up masterminds. You can get to know other community members. You get an opportunity to actually work together, get things off your to-do list, be supported, have more time to do what you love, and to have somebody to talk you off the ledge from throwing your computer across the room. All of those things happen when you hang out in our co-working space, so you're not going to want to miss that. And all of that is really easy for you to access. Just go to www.minklifeuniversity.com and sign up for the Mingle community uh, where you can join us every in all of these ways just by one membership fee, just one membership fee. So choose your plan, get on there and get active, engage in this community and start creating impact in the world. This has been such an amazing experience uh, and amazing, amazing show. Thank you so much, Marilyn and uh, Marilyn and Chris for being on with me today. I really, really appreciate you. And those of you who are watching on the couch, we love you and appreciate you. And we're here to give you that business hug. So come and join us. Uh, if you like, <laughs> yes, I'm always, <laughs> all the videos are always like, <laughs> right? Uh, but if, uh, if you want to join us again uh, on uh, Wednesday, we have Irina Surunina, who's going to help you calibrate your life at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So you won't want to miss that. And she'll, she'll be accompanied by a couple of our community members and possibly a special guest. You'll have to tune in to find out. We will see you next week. I will be off to Scotland, so I will see you on the other side of the pond. Uh, thank you again. Sharing is caring. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.